if he gives you glory now and so bless you, can you still be yourself and suffer? God has commissioned Bishop Dr. Maswell Gordon Igbe with a builder's grace to settle the limitations of life, making many to stand out as true seeds of God. Journey with God's servant as he exploits the simplicity of God's word. The world will work wonders in you, for you, and establish you as an honorable person. But the devil is afraid of this for you to have this. The day you have wasted on you. Jesus did not wait for much end. He waited for God end. Barbara Onyeka Chiku Osai is an actress from a resource person. daddy and mommy to the presidency I'm not here to talk about my relationship with them but I call daddy my chief security officer my topic is on the artistry of acting and its economic and moral glory I'd like to say in my own words that most people are opinionated and they think that for you to be an actor you probably are not interested in going to school like the four walls of education and you just want to find a space in life you just want to find a space in society where they can see you on screen and then you can have connections with big shots and all of that but i would say to you that acting as a profession is a conglomerate of different professions put together for you to be an actor the three areas of education is a prerequisite reading writing and arithmetic if you can't read you can't write you can't solve then just go back and sleep. Probably ask God to recreate you again and then you can come back. I want to say that the artistry of acting and its economic and moral glory simply means the creative skills or ability of acting and its economic and moral value. Quickly I'll say what is acting. The art of occupation, of performing in which movements, gestures, and intonation are used to realize a fictional character for stage, which is drama or play, for motion pictures, which is film, where I belong, or TV. The second definition says that acting is an activity in which a story is told by means of its enactment by an actor or actress who adopts the character. The third definition says acting is generally agreed to be a matter less of mimicry, exhibitionism, or imitation than of the ability to react to imaginary stimuli. So I will say that acting is the ability to react to imaginary stimuli. Acting is make-believe. We all are actors depending on the different roles in life that we play. Every day, every time, we assume different roles, different positions. We are not who we just truly are, we try to fit into some other person's shoes. You have a child who cries and you want the baby to stop crying and you begin to pick a boo, pick a boo, the baby, you're acting. So whatsoever role you decide to play in life, we all are actors. Um, okay, according to Mark Westbrook, an acting coach in Scotland, UK, he categorized actors into two types. Virtuoso performing, which is visible acting and method acting, which is invisible acting. For virtuoso performing, I would say briefly that this kind of acting, is, it draws attention to itself. It's the kind of acting you see um, in theaters, on stage, pantomime, kind they do with um, Shakespeare and all of that. But it's a non-naturalistic style of performance. You see that in Shakespeare, opera, pantomime, or any show where the personality or the performer is the central success of the show. The other type of actor or acting is it's no attention to itself. It's just 
the performer that you don't see. You see a man, a woman, a boy or a girl trying to portray a story, trying to tell you someone else's story. So you don't see me, but you probably see the role I'm playing. Maybe a girl whose mother is lying somewhere and she needs help. So you don't see Barbara outside. You see that girl who needs help. I want to say that most actors think that being a virtuoso actor in every role is important. But sometimes we simply need to disappear to let the real thing that we have on the inside of us to come forth. Quickly, I would say, what are the skills for acting? Being a good actor requires a range of skills. It includes good stage, screen, or vocal presence. If I'm not audible, you can't hear what I'm saying. If I don't have good stage, I probably will be shaking here or looking for some kind of anointing to fall so that I can be excused of this altar. With good stage, screen, or vocal presence, you have movements, gestures, and intonation used to realize fictional character. You have to develop a skill for expression, both vocally and bodily. Sometimes you want to say something, you don't even need to speak the word. With eye contact, you can pass a message on. Secondly, skill for acting. You have to have the ability to enter into another character and engage with an audience. We see what um, the drama group, they do here all the time. When you see them out of here, they are their real selves. When you see them here, they portray characters that they want us to see their life stories or they want us to interact or communicate with them. The third skill for acting is the ability to memorize lines. This has been imbibed in us right from childhood, in school and all of that, where we get to learn nursery rhymes. Those rhymes are not for fun. They help us in the aftermath when we probably would have grown. The fourth skill is good understanding of dramatic techniques. These are being taught in um, drama schools and all of that. I'm just giving the basic prerequisites for acting. But then it goes a long way because it cuts across all fairs of life. And the fifth skill for acting is having the confidence, the energy, and dedication to, pre to perform creative insight. I'll quickly take us through top qualities for creative acting. One, self-representation. You must be personable. You must have a pleasant appearance and manner. You must adhere to professional standards rather than personal standards. You must maintain personal hygiene, using language and manners suitable for the workplace. You can't be in church and you're using foul languages. You can't be in a workplace and you're using street languages. You can't be on the street and then you're being so sophisticated. At some point, anytime you find yourself, you need to blend in. Secondly, self-awareness. This, this is a conscious knowledge of your own character and feelings your strengths and your weaknesses, your thoughts and your beliefs, your emotions and your motivations. If you are self-aware, it is easier for you to understand other people and then you detect how they perceive you in return. If you're not self-conscious, if you're not aware of yourself, you probably think everybody's talking against you or everybody has something negative to say about you. But if you know yourself, you know where you're standing, you know where you're rooted, you know what you're doing, no matter what people say about you, it doesn't move you. Another one is self-discipline, and then an actor must be confident. You must be confident in your line memorization, your characterization, and your talent. You must be flexible. You must be flexible with time, change, and criticism, and also learn from that. I have learned from criticism. Daddy has criticized me a thousand times over. When I do something wrong, the next thing I hear is, have you started again? So even when I want to start again, I'll be like, I don't even want to hear, have you started again? Or I don't even want to bring myself to say, Daddy, I'm sorry. Or begin to find a way to send a love message to him for him to forgive me for the sins that I've committed. So we have to be positive with criticisms that come our way. They're not only there to pull us down, but we have to build from being criticized. We have to um, learn time management and organizational skills, teamwork and collaboration. No man is an island. All the things you do, you need people to work with you. I can't be an actor, a director, a cinematographer. Chinedu, where are you? <laughs> you can't be all in one. You need to work with people to be able to achieve your goals. You must have an analytic, critical, you must have analytic, critical and research skills. They don't tell you A is A and you see that. You should be able to find out why A is A. If A has um, capital captions or lowercase captions, you should be able to go around it. And when they ask you why A is A, from your own perspective, you should be able to tell them why A is A. It's not whatever they tell you in school or out there that is right. Go out, research, have your own ideas about things that happen around you. 
I'll quickly run over to tips on becoming a better actor. There are a few ways you can improve your acting skills apart from attending acting school. I've been privileged to attend a couple of schools in the United States of America, in Lagos, some online trainings. By the end of the day, whatever they teach you and you don't practicalize, then it's all a waste of time and resources. So one, you can start on becoming a better actor by reading articles and scripts. You can pick up newspapers, you can read, you can try to mimic Buhari. You can try to mimic your mother, your father, you can try to mimic daddy. And you can um, actually use your voice intonations to pass on messages. Two, character study. There's something we call a character bible in acting. When you're being given a script and they say you're to play the role of Barbara, you get to read through the script and see um, what different characters in the scripts probably have to say about Barbara or their reactions towards Barbara or how Barbara behaves. You have to know Barbara's age, Barbara's class, Barbara's religion, Barbara's political association. That helps you to build your perspective on who Barbara is. So when you're called on set to be Barbara, then you can be Barbara. You can be Ngozi and then you're putting Ngozi in Barbara. You have to drop Ngozi and be Barbara. It's called character study. It helps in portraying the real character when you role play. And then you have to memorize lines, listen to yourself and listen to others. It brings us to communication. It's a two-way thing. You pass the message, the message is being received, feedback, it sends to you. You don't just talk and then you agree that everybody has heard or everybody has listened. You should wait for a feedback so you'll be sure that proper communication has taken place. You have to stay healthy. If you're not healthy, you can't work, you can't be anywhere. No matter the anointing, no matter the vitamins, you have to be healthy for you to be able to function. You have to diversify. Learn skills like driving, swimming, other languages. They come in handy in role playing. Sometimes they might want to do a cast and the person who they really want to play is not available. And then all of a sudden they say, okay, let's call Pastor Silas. Lo and behold, all Pastor Silas knows is to carry the Bible and quote scriptures. Pastor Silas cannot drive. Pastor Silas loses that role. You have to watch every great movie you can lay your hands on. You get to learn on the job. It's practical. You don't stay in your room and say you're an actor and then you are praying and waiting for things to happen. You have to get practical. Watch every movie you can. Characters that you like, actors that you like, mimic them, learn them, and then you'll be better. You can film a scene by acting before a mirror. But then we all have phones now, so we can use our phones and get ourselves recorded. Then you can sit back, analyze, criticize, and make amends to your act. At this point, I would like to um, mention someone that we probably all know. You probably would not know the person behind it, but I know that we all know Iroko TV. Iroko TV started as an online platform. It's owned by Jason and Joko, an online internet guy. Some way, somehow, he was just doing his thing online. But somehow, he came in contact with Mary Remy, she's an actress. She tried, she struggled hard, producers rejected her, some even told her, go and do what others are doing, and then when you make it be, you can come, we will help you. Mary would cry, Mary would pray, but Mary kept, she, she was steadfast. Somehow they met and they are married, and they have beautiful children. You all watch Iroko. Now there's Iroko 1, Iroko 2, Iroko 3, they have Iroko in the UK and all that. That was Jason and his online business, together with Mary, an actress. Now Mary Remy has way over 3,000 people that she pays salary working for her. So if she had given up on her dreams or she hadn't built herself, probably would have met someone else, or even if he had married her without all of those skills and talents, we probably wouldn't have had what we have today. So what I'm saying is, whatsoever thing we find ourselves doing, we should try as much as possible to be very relevant so that if you are not there, you will be missed. I will go to the economic glory of acting, that is to say the benefits of acting, but before that I would like to, I would like to go through um, some statistics. Nollywood today is a voice, it's a name, it has a face, and the government has come to respect its potency. Nollywood has grown to become the second, second largest film industry in the world generating $286 million per year for the Nigerian economy. If we take exchange rate at um, 360, that would be a mind-blowing figure. <laughs> An average movie employs a minimum of 130 people, with the least paid person going home with between five to 10,000 Naira. In some cases, the person can feature in four films in probably 48 hours or 72 hours, 
We all know in Asaba, we see them everywhere with their buses and they are doing films like almost every hour. So you can imagine if someone participates in four films in minimum 48 hours, that thing can go home with between 25 to 30,000 naira. That's where above the normal minimum wage that we're all fighting to have an increase from 18,000 to 30,000 naira. According to 2014 reports from the United States International Trade Commission, that is the USITC, Nollywood generates on average, I smile when I see these figures, 600 million US dollars a year for the economy. At 360 naira exchange rate per dollar, that comes to 216 billion naira. It's also estimated that it employs more than 1 million people, excluding pirates making it Nigeria's largest employer of labor after agriculture. At this point, I would like to say it takes many years of practice to develop your skills as an actor or the skills needed to be a successful actor. Actors never truly finish training. At some point, I'm being called to do a job and I'm G3, I'm so scared. I go to meet the director, what do you think about this character? What do you think about this role? And he says, what do you think about it? I tell him what I think about it and we marry together. And then you come on set, people are wondering, oh, she's super. But it was just a little two aside meeting you had with the director and he told you what he expected of your character and you married ideas together. So actors work to improve their acting skills throughout their career. Many continue through training workshops, rehearsals or mentoring by a drama coach. I know most of us will be wondering, acting, acting, acting. You don't have to be young or old beautiful or ugly, we need all of those futures to make a story right. So I'm going to tell us some job options available as an actor. One, you can be an actor. Two, you can be a community arts worker. Three, you can be a dancer. Four, you can be a drama therapist. I know you guys will say these things don't work in Nigeria. They work outside the country, but they do work in Nigeria. It's way past time where all we need is a certificate. I've had my first degree, I've had my second degree, I'm working on a third degree, but I'm still not working with any, in any government parastate, or rather I've built for myself an empire with a push of daddy, and things are looking glorious. You can be a music therapist, you can be a theater director, you can be a production manager, a producer, you can be a director, a screenwriter. Some jobs where your acting degree will be useful include the film director, higher education lecturer, theater stage manager, broadcast presenter. Some typical employers that would employ you with your degree in performing arts include the local government, arts organization, national health service, leisure companies, voluntary organizations, education institutes. Lastly, short term or freelance contracts, moving between fields, generating opportunities through networking, attending auditions, collaborations with other artists and putting up your own shows are all part of a performance lifestyle. Last year, I did not do any work like, I wasn't called, I was called, but it wasn't lucrative, so I said no. I didn't do any work last year. This year I haven't done any work, but at the end of last year, I put together um, a cultural beauty pageant, Face of Uguta, and I took it home. And it was well accepted. I brought it to Daddy. He told me to go ahead and do all I needed to do. I came back home here, and because I didn't want to fail, it was a new, it was a new venture, and I needed a solid base. I came to church, I carried Chinedu, I carried Tony Defoni, I carried the um, spirit of David, and we all went to my hometown, and it was amazing. So this year we're having a second edition. It's nobody's business, it's my business. When the gains come, it's my money. I'm not paying anything to anybody. If I make it, I make it. If I don't make it, I don't make it. But why would I be in HCA and not make it? What I'm trying to say to us is, we should try to find something that works for us, and work towards it. It probably will not pay now, it probably will not pay tomorrow, but at some time, some point, it's going to pay and it will make you relevant. Next year, I'll start my production company full time. I'm going to be giving myself jobs. I'm going to be employing people, employing my colleagues. So I will not just be seen as Barbara, my colleague, I'll be seen as Barbara, my colleague, and my boss. Isn't that beautiful? I want to come to the moral glory of acting. I said to excel in any field, you must manifest high principles for proper conduct. Performing arts is about how you present yourself. Your attitude determines your altitude. One, it equips you with professional standards. Two, it provides a platform for you to interact, understand, and respect other people as well as yourself. Three, it helps identify your strengths and your weaknesses and creates room for improvement. 
I would like to say that whatever it is we cite as our weaknesses should just really not be things that pull us down. But we should work on our weaknesses and then make them our strengths. Four, you promote orderliness as time management and organizational skills are a necessity. Five, it encourages reading culture. If you can't pick up a book to read or a newspaper to read, you can read them online. Just about the same thing Chinedu said. Instead of gossiping here and there, make a living out of it. If you can't take a book and read, if you pick a book, some people pick books to read because they want to sleep. The sleep can't come, so they want to induce it. So they just pick up a book because once they start reading, they will sleep off. You can read online. Number five moral, number six moral glory of acting is it encourages hard work and creativity. There's no way you'll be an actor that you will not be able to, at one point in your life, think for yourself, make decisions for yourself, know which way is right to go, which way is wrong, and choose not to go because there are too many rules that are not right. People just wade through because they want to make a headway in life. I've been able, to the glory of God, to to be in, this, in my industry and still remain a child of God. Too many of us have come for me to deviate from being a child of God, but at every point I say to myself, Father Lord, I know that whatsoever role will come my way is something I would probably have merited, so I will not do anything extra to be seen on TV. So if I keep to this part of my bargain, you should keep to yours, saying that you will bless the work of my hands and you would make me a light of the world and a salt to the earth. So if you follow through with the things that you want to do and you have reference for the God factor, no matter how long it takes or the delay, it definitely will come to pass. At this point, I will say that above all, excellence in any field of life depends solely on the God factor. Thank you. believe that God's word through the leaves of his servants has begun wonders in you, transforming you for an honorable living. Please share your testimonies with us. Write Bishop Dr. Maswell Awe, PO Boss 1462, email honorchristianassembly at gmail.com. And at best of all, join us at any of our services. 7 a.m. first service, 8.30 a.m. second service, 10 a.m. third service every Sunday, and 4.30 p.m. communion service every Wednesday. View this tabernacle, Rayobot City, along the Saba Ibuzo Expressway, opposite Stepdown Transformer, Delta State.